We've moved on from wired headphones. We pay with our phones. But when it comes to getting online or calling a friend, for some reason, we're still putting a chunk of plastic into our smartphones. What if I told you that modern phones already have the technology to let you forget about SIM cards forever? It's called eSIM. And in this video, we're going to talk about what it is, why you might need it, how it works, and why it's better than the SIM card you're used to. And if you want to avoid Googling how to activate an eSIM later, just watch till the end. I'll show you how to set it up step by step using the Yesim app as an example. Hi, I'm Max and this is Yesim Travel Tips. Stick around, this is gonna be good. Let's take a quick trip back in time. In the 1920s, some American police departments started using two-way radios. It helped them stay in touch with patrol cars, making communication much more efficient. Now officers could share updates on suspects in real time without relying on phone lines. Soon after, taxi companies in Detroit began using similar systems. Drivers would switch channels based on where they were in the city to talk to dispatch. That's when it became clear this technology had real potential. Fast forward to 1973. Martin Cooper, one of Motorola's lead engineers, introduced the world's first mobile phone. It weighed over 700 grams. It worked for about 30 minutes on a full charge and needed 10 hours to recharge. The price? $4,000, which was a massive amount back then. It was the first mobile phone people could really carry around, though not for long. But there was one major drawback. These early phones didn't have SIM cards or even phone numbers. The network identified users by the phone's serial number, so people were completely tied to a specific device. If you bought a new phone, you had to visit your mobile provider to get your number moved over. Clearly something had to change. People needed a way to separate their phone number from the device itself. That solution came in 1991 with the arrival of 2G networks. That's when the first SIM cards were introduced. They looked like this, about the size of a credit card. And they weren't just pieces of plastic, they were basically tiny computers. Each one had a processor, memory, encryption modules, and even a random number generator. By the way, SIM stands for Subscriber Identity Module. Over time, SIM cards started getting smaller. First came the mini SIM, the one many of us remember. Then with the launch of the iPhone 4, we got the micro SIM. And one generation later, with the iPhone 5, came another size, the nano SIM. Today, in addition to all the different SIM card formats, there's another interesting option called eSIM. So what exactly is an eSIM and how is it different from a regular SIM card? At first glance, eSIM and regular SIM cards do the same job. They connect your phone to the network. But there are three major differences. And no, we're not talking about minor stuff. First, people often think eSIM means electronic SIM, like email or e-commerce but it actually stands for embedded, meaning it's built right into the device. It's a physical chip, just like your camera or speaker. You can't remove it, lose it, or break it during installation. It is always inside, quietly doing its job. Second, eSIM is tiny. It is much smaller than any SIM card we've used before. That means more place inside the phone for a bigger battery, extra sensors, or better waterproofing, and no tray. That means one less moving part to worry about. Third, and this one's huge. With eSIM, your phone can store data from multiple carriers and update everything remotely. That means you can switch providers or plans without going to a store or dealing with plastic cards. Just scan a QR code in the app and your phone loads the new profile automatically. Here's how it works. Your phone gets all the setup information over the internet. It's not just a plan, but a full digital profile with your number, network settings, and access to services. The transfer uses a global standard called remote SIM provisioning, and everything goes through a secure connection to prevent tampering or interception. And here's what that gives you. You can store several eSIM profiles on one phone. For example, the iPhone 16 Pro can hold up to 20 and use two at the same time. Switching between them takes just a few seconds. It's also more reliable. Physical SIM cards can break or wear out, but with eSIM, that's not an issue and it's more secure. A regular SIM can be removed and used in another phone. An eSIM is locked to your device so it stays where it is. Also, some eSIM apps come with a built-in VPN. The Yesim app has one too. I'll show you how it works a bit later. But first, if you're not sure what a VPN is, here's a quick breakdown. It stands for Virtual Private Network. Basically, it protects your personal data when you're using public Wi-Fi, like in airports, hotels, or coffee shops. Imagine it as a protected tunnel that carries your internet traffic. 
Everything you do online passes through that tunnel and no one can see what sites you visit or which apps you're using, not your internet provider, not some random hacker on the same network. It's especially helpful when you're traveling and you want to keep in safe your passwords, messages, or bank info. Like I said earlier, eSIM is especially helpful if you travel a lot or split your time between countries. You land in a new country, open the app, pick a plan, and you're online. You don't need to visit a store, buy a plastic SIM, pop it into your phone, and hope that it will work. Everything connects over the internet. Instead of juggling multiple phones, you've got only one. It can hold your work number, your personal number, and even a plan for another country. You don't need to switch anything manually. All the settings for each number are right there in one menu. You can even split calls and data, keep your regular SIM for one, and use eSIM for the other. They function side by side without any conflicts. And best of all, you're always in control and get online in seconds. There's only one question, is whether your phone supports eSIM. Most newer smartphones support eSIM, and if your phone isn't too old, this should work. It's easy to check. On iPhone, go to Settings, Cellular, Add Cellular Plan. If you see that option, you're good. On Android, it depends on the brand. Go to the Settings, then Network and Internet, or SIM Cards. If you see Add eSIM or Download SIM, your phone is compatible. Most phones can run two profiles at the same time, one physical SIM and one eSIM, but they can store more. You just pick which one to use in the settings. Now for the fun part, I'll show you the fastest way to set up eSIM on your phone. I'll be showing everything using an iPhone 16 Pro Max as an example. If you're on Android, the interface might look a little different, but the steps are basically the same. If you run into any issues setting up eSIM on Android, just drop a comment and we'll make a separate video for that. I'll be showing the process of buying a plan on a laptop. First, we go to the YesSIM website, or you can download the app on your phone from the App Store. All the links are in the pinned comment below this video. Then, make sure that you sign up. I have already done that part, so we can move forward. Next, pick the country you want to travel to. I'll go with Argentina. On this screen, you'll see a bunch of different plans. I'm picking the cheapest one, just for a three gigabytes. Click buy now. That brings you to the payment page. Enter the promo code YESTRAVEL in this field before you complete the purchase. You will find it in the description too. And just like that, my plan goes from 10 euros to seven. Not bad at all. If you want to activate your plan later, like on the day you arrive, just click here. You can do it anytime, whenever it works best for you. Now choose a payment method. Click change a payment method and you'll see a list of options. Pick whatever works best for you. I'm paying with Apple Pay. Click pay to move to the confirmation page. Then click pay again. And just like that, I've got my new data plan. Next, I'm checking my email for the QR code. Here it is. Now go to your phone settings, cellular, add eSIM, use QR code. Point your camera at the code. It'll ask you to name the plan. I'm calling mine YesSIM. That comes in handy if you end up using multiple eSIM profiles later. If you want to start using the plan immediately, make sure the YesSIM profile is turned on as well as data roaming. Once our eSIM is correctly installed, you are ready to activate and use mobile internet from YesSIM. It may take up to 5 to 10 minutes for the eSIM to find connectivity after the plan has been activated. If scanning doesn't work, your phone will let you enter everything manually. Just go to the menu on the website, click More, then Help Center. That'll take you to the support page. Open Getting Started with Mobile Data. There, you'll find step-by-step -step guides for different setup options. And if you want to use the VPN, just open the YesSIM app and slide this toggle to the right. eSIM isn't just a new way to get online, it's a shift toward a smarter system. Just your phone, your plan, and you're ready to go. It's built for how we move, traveling, working remotely, living across borders, or just staying flexible. And here's the thing, more and more devices support eSIM every year. It's not a test run anymore, it's the new normal, like wireless earbuds or tap to pay. If your phone supports eSIM, you're probably ready to start using it right now. Everything you need is already inside. Thanks for watching, hit that subscribe button, like, and stay tuned. Next one's already on the way.